Hey boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about the volume of three-dimensional shapes. What I want you to learn by the end of this video is how to be able to find the volume of a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. And you're going to find that using the formulas that we already know. Area equals base times, I mean, yeah, area equals base times height. Uh, area equals one-half base times height. Those are the respective formulas for the square or the rectangle and the triangle. Okay, that's all you need to help you find the volume of shapes like this. Also, you're going to be able to find a missing dimension when you're given the volume and one of these dimensions is missing. All right, so I'm going to show you four examples. I'm going to show you two with the rectangular prism and two with the triangular prism. The first one of each is going to be just a straight, what's the volume of this shape? The second one is going to be that missing length when I have the volume. All right, so let's get started. In our example here, I have a rectangular prism, and its base or its length is 4.6 feet, its height is 5.2 feet, and its depth is 2.1 feet. So we use the formula volume equals base times height times length. Now, this is an L. It's a lowercase l in cursive. I know a lot of y'all aren't, aren't familiar with cursive, but this is how we write it in math. The reason why we do that, because if I were to write a lowercase l, well, guess what? That's my one. That's the l. They look very similar. So in order to be able to keep them separate, we write it in cursive. That way you know that way you know it's L, that's the length that we're talking about. So that's what that cursive L means. All right, so we just plug in the numbers. Doesn't matter how we do it, because multiplication, remember, these variables next to each other mean to multiply. Multiplication is commutative. So we write 2.1 times 5.2 times 4.6. Now we just multiply them together. You can pick any order you want to, multiply them any, any way you want. All right, so I'm going to do 5.2 and 4.6 first, because you can only multiply two at a time. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 is 31. Bring a 0 down. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 5 is 20. Now I add these numbers together. 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 8 is 9. 3 plus 0 is 3 and I just bring the two down. Now I had one decimal place in the first factor, one decimal place in the second factor, whoops, hold on, that's not right, one decimal place in the second factor, that means my answer is going to have two decimal places, so I start at the right and I count back one, two places, and that's where my answer goes. So the volume for this particular shape equals 23.92 got to use the units, feet, cubed. We're using cubes now because we're talking about volume. We have one, two, three dimensions. So our answer has to reflect that we're talking three-dimensional space. When we did area, it was squared. Those were only two dimensions, length and width. Now we added that third dimension, so that's why we use cubes. All right? So in the second example, I have this shape and I have the height and I have the width, and I just, I don't have the length. But I do know that my volume is 25.668 yards cubed. So the question asks me, what is the length of a rectangular prism when the volume is 25.668, the width is 4.6 yards, and the height is 3.1 yards? So this is what I'm going to show you. Follow the same formula, volume equals length times width times height. I wrote it different in the last example, but this means the exact same thing. Um, so let's just plug in numbers. I know my volume, 25.668 equals, I know my length. Well, let's say we're looking for the length. I know my width is 4.6. I'm going to multiply that times my height, which is 3.1. And I'm going to multiply that times my length, which I don't know. So now I just have to combine everything. This is essentially this is an algebraic problem. We've already done these one step equations. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply 4.6 times 3.1. 
4.6 times 3.1, let's just do it here, I can't read it on my chart, 4.6, 3.1, that's 46, 0, that's 18, 12, 13, add them, 6, 12, 4, got 1, 2, 1, 2, so 14.26, L. Okay, I'm going to erase this part real quick. Okay, so now we have 25.668 equals 14.26 times some unknown value, which is the length. So in order to get this unknown value by itself, I have to undo the operation that it, it's, it's currently in, which is multiplication. Because a number next to a variable means to multiply. So I have to divide by 14.26. And I have to do it the same thing on both sides because I want to keep the equation balanced. If I do something to one side, I have to do it to the other. These 14.26's cancel out, and they do that because 14.26 over 14.26 is one. One times L gives me L. So whatever 25.668 divided by 14.26 is, that's gonna be my answer. Um, let's go ahead and do it. 25.668 divided by 14.26, all right, 14, I want to get the decimal out of the divisor, got to move it two places, that's where my decimal is going to go, 14, or 1,426 will go into 2,568 approximately one time, because if I did it twice, that would be 28, so that's not going to work, so 1,426, I subtract, that is a 6, so that's a 0, that's a 4, that's a 1, and that's a 1. 1140 is smaller than 1426, so I'm good. I bring down this 8. That'll go in about 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 2 is uh, 16, 20. 8 times 4 is 32, 34. Carry the 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. I subtract, I get 0. My answer is 1.8 yards. That's all there is to finding a missing length when you're given the formula for a rectangular prism. All right, so now we're going to talk about volume of a triangular prism. Once again, this is a three-dimensional shape, and it's the best I can do on a, on a two-dimensional surface, or a one-dimension surface, I guess. All you've seen is a flat screen. So this is it. And to find the volume of this shape, we use that base formula that we have for the triangle, which is, and I'm going to put volume here, but the base formula for the triangle is one-half base times the height. But we have an added dimension. So the added dimension is the length. Okay, other than that, it's exactly the same. So we just plug in our values. The volume equals, we'll just say 1 half times 8 times 12 times 20. Now I hope that everybody sees where I get these numbers. 8 is my height, 12 is my base, 20 is my length. It really doesn't matter the order I put them in because multiplication is commutative. That means I can change the order of how I multiply and it does not affect my answer. So the first thing I want to do is probably go ahead you know what I would do, really? I would take half of one of these numbers, probably the biggest one since they're all even, and that's going to make my, my dividing or my multiplying a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take half of 20. Half of 20 is 10. So I'm going to say 8 times 12 times 10. Okay, notice I dropped the half and the 20, and I replaced it with a 10, because that means I multiplied 1 half times 20. You could totally multiply these three numbers together and divide that answer by 2, that's completely acceptable, but I'm just a big fan of doing it like this. So now I can, I can actually easily, more easily multiply. 8 times 12 is 96. And then finally, 96 times 10 is 960. And that's my answer. The answer is 960 inches cubed. Once again, even though this is a triangular prism, our dimensions are cubic because we're talking about volume. We're talking about three dimensions. So that's how you find the area of a rectangular prism using the formula when you're given all the information. So in this last example, we're given this 
triangular pyramid, or tri not pyramid, but triangular prism, and we're asked to find the missing length if I know the base and the height, and I know the volume. So once again, we go back to that same formula that we used before. Volume equals one half times the base times the height times the length. And we just plug in numbers. My volume is 560. All right, that one half stays the same. My base is 14. My height is eight. My length, I don't know. So I'm leaving that one as a variable. Now I just combine what I have over on this side of the equation, and then I'm going to simplify. So first thing, now once again, you can do this either way. If you want to go ahead and multiply 14 times 8 and divide that answer by 2, be my guest. I'm going to go ahead and take half of one of these numbers because I just think that's going to be easier. A half of 14 is 7, so I'm going to multiply 1 half times 7, and 1 half times 14 rather, and get 7, then multiply that times 8 and then I'll have my variable there as well. So 560 equals 7 times 8, which is 56L. Now I have a one-step equation. We've learned how to do this in prior videos. I have a number times a variable. This is your coefficient. This is your variable. When they're next to each other with no symbol, that means I'm multiplying the value of 56 times the value of L, whatever that may be. And my answer is going to be 560. So. I need to figure out what L is, so I have to get rid of this 56. Because we're dealing with multiplication, I have to divide to undo that. And I'm going to divide by the number in front of the variable. And I'm going to do that to both sides of the equation. 56 over 56 simplifies to 1. 1 times L is L. 560 divided by 56 is 10. So my answer is the length equals 10 inches. Now my answer here is not cubed because I'm talking about one dimension, so it's just inches. I don't think I stated that in the prior examples, but that's that's it. When you're talking about one length, you talk about one dimension, so we don't we don't specify that with a with a square or a cube. And that's it.